Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Kay and on this channel I talk about motherhood and entrepreneurship. So today I'm going to be talking about my breastfeeding journey and just a few tips that I have to help you if you're a first time mom breastfeeding. If you don't know, I'm a first time mom. I just had my son. Um, he is now seven weeks old. So I'm going to be sharing my journey and just some tips that I have from breastfeeding for these last seven weeks. So the first tip that I have is keep going especially in the beginning in the beginning you're going to think that you're not producing any milk but the truth of the matter is that the first milk that your body produces is called colstrum so this milk is going to be very thick very dense but you probably won't see it the way that you're kind of used to seeing um breast milk right that you're, you're expecting you know white flowing breast milk right but in the beginning it's not going to look like that so um just keep going in the beginning because even though you think you're not producing any milk you definitely are your baby is is latched on hopefully they're latching on properly and they are pulling that that milk out they call that milk um I think they call it like liquid gold or something like that so you are producing milk in the beginning so that's like tip number one in the beginning don't give up like keep going they say that if your baby is like wetting diapers and stuff like that that's how you know that they're getting um, milk in the beginning and then also they'll pick up a little bit of weight now a lot of times babies lose weight but when they leave the hospital so you know it's, it's kind of like a catch-22 there but sometimes they they will like try to get you to supplement with formula i know we supplemented with formula twice in the hospital and after after the couple of times i was just like mm, i feel like that he was getting the the milk from me so i didn't stress too much but in the beginning you're gonna feel like you're not producing anything but just be encouraged like just know that as long as your baby is wetting diapers like there's like the, the lactation consultant will tell you in the hospital how many diapers that they should be wetting, um, how many bowel movements they should have. They'll let you know. And if your baby is doing that, don't stress that you're not seeing the milk. Just know that the milk is actually there and that they're getting it. So with that respect, I think your breast milk starts coming in, they say anywhere from like five to eight days after birth. So I know for me, my actual breast milk came in probably around one week after he was born and after that I noticed that I was engorged so engorged just means like my breasts were really full they were heavy they were um you know a little warm to the touch I will say that engorgement hurts so in the beginning when I say keep going like I'm not just saying keep going because you don't see anything I'm saying keep going because the more you can get your baby to move the milk out of your breast the less likely you're going to be engorged because engorgement it hurts like it hurts really bad um like you'll be sitting there like not wanting like I, sometimes i'll be like this because i don't want my clothes to even touch my breast so engorgement definitely hurts so you want to keep on latching your baby letting your baby pull the milk out even if you think that he's not he or she is not pulling anything out you want to still try and still let them do it and this is like a side note but breastfeeding can like I don't want to say it hurts but like at the beginning it can be a little painful when they're first latching on but after about 20 seconds that pain feeling should go away and you, you shouldn't feel them really on your breast at all so I just want to kind of make that little note because that was something that was kind of surprising to me like how kind of it doesn't feel good when they're first latching on so my next tip is to not focus on the clock right so a lot of times you'll hear the people like um doctors and lactation consultants they'll they'll say you know feed every two hours or something like that well lactation consultants they don't really try to put you on a timer but doctors and nurses and other healthcare providers they'll say you know every two hours they need to be feeding if you read blog posts and stuff like that it's going to tell you every two hours you should be feeding but the truth of the matter is that you should feed your baby when your baby is hungry and so your baby is going to give you feeding cues they're going to um you know maybe they're gonna make like a sucking noise like my my, my baby makes sucking noises um well all babies do so not just mine but um they're gonna make like a sucking noise you know like like you're gonna see them maybe they're gonna start like you know moving their face like because they're trying to find your breast they're trying to find the food so when you see them making those cues just feed your baby even if it's been 20 minutes sometimes um babies are going through growth spurts they call it cluster feeding when babies are eating like back to back to back and and it just it happens like sometimes they're going through a growth spurt sometimes they need comfort there's different reasons why a baby might want to be on the breast if you see them making cues and you see them wanting to come towards you wanting to eat just feed them whether it's been two hours or not so i always say don't focus on the clock just focus on feeding them and, and soothing them when they need it so my third tip when it comes to breastfeeding is to have entertainment ready okay i did not realize how much time i spent sitting down breastfeeding or i didn't realize how much time you would sit down <laughs> breastfeeding until i started doing it and oh my gosh I, um, I tracked it one week and I spent 35 hours breastfeeding, actively sitting down and breastfeeding. 
it is exhausting and it could also be very very boring so when you sit down make sure you have your entertainment make sure you have your headphones or your earbuds make sure you have your phone your laptop um netflix your tv just make sure you have some sorts of entertainment because if not you will be sitting there breastfeeding bored out of your mind especially in the beginning because your baby is still trying to figure out how to latch they're still trying to figure out how to pull the milk and stuff and so honestly those breastfeeding sessions take a lot longer so now that he's seven weeks i've, I've noticed that it doesn't take him as long to to eat because i think he's figured out like okay this is how i do it i get in there he can get in there and get out you know but at the beginning i would sit there sometimes for like 40 minutes waiting for him to finish um but now you know he can finish a lot faster um and sometimes he still sits on the boob for you know forever but I, I now know to have entertainment so just make sure you have some source of entertainment for you because child it gets born real quick so tip number four is focus on self-care it's very important to drink a lot of water and to eat healthy while you're breastfeeding your breast milk is made up of a lot of water it's made up of um, vitamins minerals proteins antibodies amino acids it's made of all the it's made of everything your baby needs to develop right and so it's going to be very important that you are feeding yourself healthy uh, foods fruits vegetables protein things like that and that you're also drinking water because that is what is building and creating your breast milk that's very important and then also focusing on your own self-care right because like i said before sitting down like you can spend 35 hours a week just breastfeeding so it's going to be very important that you kind of focus on your own self-care and focus on like your own mental health because um it can be exhausting and you know especially coming off of like just having delivered you're, you're going to be feeling all different kind of emotions in some kind of way not necessarily negative breastfeeding can be a bit challenging um, a lot of people go through different challenges with breastfeeding and so it's just going to be very important for you to take care of yourself however that looks for you and speaking of self-care there's a couple of things that make um, breastfeeding a little bit easier is to have nipple cream and nipple pads nipple cream has really been a lifesaver for me I use two different types I use um, one from Earth Mama, it's the organic nipple butter. And then I use another one from um, Lansanoa. I don't know how to say this word, but anyway, it's um, lanolin cream. Um, I use this one when um, when he bites me. Like if he bites me, I use this one because usually this one is a lot thicker. And I like how this one kind of gives me like a coating of protection over my nipple after he's bit me like nobody's business so i use this one for that and then the organic uh nipple butter i use this one all the time this one i use 24 7 because it just it feels good it's not um super thick and it doesn't mess up my clothes and things like that both of these can i'm gonna link them below but both of these are safe for the baby so you don't have to like wash it off before you feed again which is really nice because nobody has time to keep washing before they feed their baby and stuff so both of these are good for you to use when when you're um, well, both of these are good for the baby this one i've noticed in particular the the organic one it it actually keeps his lips from being chapped at the beginning i, I noticed that he his lips were chapped and then when i started using this one by um earth mama his lips stopped being chapped because i really like that so that was a really good thing um, and then also something else that i just thought of is make sure that you guys protect your wrists if you haven't already started breastfeeding go get a, a wrist brace and actually if you are already breastfeeding get a wrist brace i just recently got one and it's been a lifesaver because when i first started breastfeeding you don't realize like how heavy your baby is or like what the position that you're holding your baby in and imagine you guys hear him grunting he's so funny so that's his way of telling me that's his way of telling me that i'm talking too much <laughs> All right, anyway, so back to the wrist brace. Um, the wrist brace is just gonna save your life a lot because you don't realize like how heavy and like how often you're holding your baby in a certain position. And so it just makes things a lot easier when you have the wrist brace because it keeps your wrist from being fatigued. So the wrist brace definitely is gonna be a lifesaver. Okay, so the next tip is to cut your baby's nails, file your baby's nails. And the reason why is because baby, your baby will be scratching all up on your breast. They will be scratching on your hands. They will scratch their own face and upset themselves. And so just making sure that you um, have their nails and everything cut is going to be a lifesaver. So the next tip is to have pillows and blankets on hand for comfort. So one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of times when I'm breastfeeding, it just feels really good to have a pillow propped up against my back, probably like two or three of them. And then also to have pillows up underneath my arm. I don't have one right now, but um, I actually have a blanket in front of me that I'm gonna probably 
only use to prop him up right now if he stays on my breast long but it's just really helpful to have blankets pillows just diff anything that's um soft and some kind of cushion to give you support when you're you know feeding or when you're trying to figure out how to latch them and sometimes i know a lot of people use like the boppy pillow i personally couldn't figure out how to use it he didn't really like the boppy pillow that much so i don't use a boppy pillow but i will um use just like a regular pillow or um or a blanket so my next tip is to wear comfortable clothes make sure that you get a nursing bra that's one thing so comfortable clothes are a must-have i either recommend going without a bra or to wear a nursing bra or one of those night nursing bras so lately i've been wearing the night nursing bras i'll, I'll insert a picture of it and i'll also link it below the one that i have but the night nursing bras honestly i wear those all day i don't even wear the nursing bra anymore because the nursing bra was still giving me too much resistance so it's very important not to wear a bra with underwire because underwire is going to lift you up too much and when you get lifted it's, it could cause you to basically basically get a clogged duct and that is the worst feeling in the world to get a clogged duct and having a clogged duct can lead to mastitis which is something that i also got so um yeah i learned the hard way not to wear a, um, a bra with underwire it's, it's very important do not wear a bra with underwire wear one of the night bras wear a nursing bra or um, wear a wear no bra and also you can you can purchase on amazon also you can purchase um uh, what do you what do they call them? I think they're called like nursing nursing tank tops and nursing tops. So I have nursing tops, which basically is a a tank top that has a top portion that you can lift up and lift down to feed the baby. I wish I would have wore it today because then it would have been a lot easier for me to breastfeed him while I'm doing this video. But whatever, it's not a big deal. But yeah, the nursing tops are really are really nice. They're not necessarily the most fashionable thing, but I mean I'm sure you can find like really fashionable and trendy nursing clothing or nursing attire that you can wear if you need to go out or something also something else that i wear is just i wear a lot of like nice comfy kind of uh oversized tank tops um and that's that's been really helpful too because since i'm like i pull it down or i can just lift it up and i can like just put like you know this um this fabric right here is for my wrap and so I'll, i can use my wrap and be feeding him inside of it and nobody is the wiser so so my next tip is to ask for help right it can be very emotional breastfeeding like breastfeeding is a really emotional thing i remember when i got mastitis um we had to give king um formula um just one bottle of formula and i felt terrible i was like crying i was like oh my gosh i don't know why i can't feed my baby blah blah and it wasn't even it wasn't even that it was just literally i was in so much pain that i had to get medication so it's important to just ask for help um because being breastfeeding being a first time mom being a mom period it can be very emotional and so asking for help is going to be important um and when you feel like things aren't going right talk to a lactation consultant like lactation consultants I just have a whole newfound respect for them. I, I work with one that is at my hospital that I delivered at and I'm able to call them, you know, all the time and just ask them questions and they're able to, you know, reassure me and give me tips and let me know what I should and, and shouldn't be doing. I can go into the hospital and see them. And so having a lactation consultant that you can talk to is going to be really great because you need to ask for help. You need to ask somebody, especially as a first time mom, because you don't know like we don't know that's really good and then also asking your partner for help or asking a family member for help like sometimes you need someone to make food for you or to get you some water or you know just to sit with you you know like make sure that you are um you know seeking support from people that can provide support for you so my ninth tip is to use a haka i love my haka so much um i use it basically to catch the let down so like um i didn't do it just now because i was recording but um usually i will attach it onto the other breast that he's not on and it will catch um any um milk that i have that's leaking and then also if i'm feeling engorged but i don't feel like putting like actually using my pump my electric pump i'll put this on and then massage my breast to get the milk out so um, the haka is definitely like a lifesaver especially when you're first first starting breastfeeding it's not really advised that you use a breast pump in the beginning so if you want to kind of pump you can use the haka as a way of pumping and so with that respect i want to give my next tip which is in the beginning don't focus on storing milk now i understand if you have to go back to work you know really soon or something like that and so you have to store milk but in the beginning don't focus so much on storing milk because it can be very discouraging when you see like you're not producing as much milk as you thought honestly in, in all honesty 
when you pump, you're only supposed to be able to pump anywhere from 0.5 ounces to four ounces. So if you're pumping anything in that amount, you are actually producing enough milk. But a lot of people get discouraged when they see, you know, one ounce or half an ounce, and then they think that they're not producing any milk. In the beginning, you know, they always advise not to pump before six weeks because your body is still trying to regulate itself. If you need your spouse, your partner, a family member to feed the baby, pump you know I, I people will say anything but at the end of the day you have to do what works best for you your baby and your family and your situation and so if you need to pump go ahead and pump but just make sure that you are putting yourself on some sort of schedule so that you can regulate your breasts because if not you will find yourself engorged and i mean it could being engorged can just lead to so many different breast complications afterwards such as like getting mastitis and things like that okay so my next tip is to introduce a bottle whenever you can like the sooner you can introduce a bottle the better and the only reason why i say this is because introducing a bottle is going to allow you to be able to let other people feed the baby um and you don't have to like introduce the bottle you know the first week or anything but maybe like around a month or like six weeks introduce the bottle to them so they can get used to being fed by somebody else and ideally it's probably going to be like your partner a parent you know or your grandparents um not your grandparents the baby's grandparents y'all know what i'm trying to say ideally it'll be like people that are close to you and then also it prepares them for if you're going to put them in daycare or have a babysitter or a nanny or something, then you'll be able to have somebody else feed the baby. Um, I know people talk a lot about nipple confusion. King did not experience any nipple confusion. He takes my breast, he takes the bottle. It's not a big deal. So um, I think if you start them on the bottle early, it doesn't have to be all day. I, I give him one bottle a day. Some days he doesn't get a bottle at all. And so he's not like dependent on the bottle. When I got mastitis, I did give him the bottle multiple times a day because I would give him the bottle whenever he was supposed to feed off of the side that had mastitis. So I had mastitis on my right breast. And um, so whenever it was time for him to feed on that breast, I would pump and then feed him from a bottle. But even then, he didn't get attached to the bottle. And I forgot to put my other earring on because he pulled it off a few minutes ago. Anyway, so yeah get them started on a bottle you know kind of as soon as possible because it just helps you and, and frees you up so that somebody else can help you when it comes to feeding the baby so speaking of bottles my next tip is to get your pump through your insurance so a lot of insurance companies like they will give you a free pump and so i got my pump on on a facebook ad I, a facebook ad came up saying that you get a free breast pump with your insurance so i signed up for it it took all of five minutes and i had a breast pump it came in the month before i had him and it was just perfect and i love it it's i'll, I'll link which one i got but it's the land land so it's the same brand that i have with the nipple cream definitely take advantage of getting your breast pump with your insurance if you're able to do that so this is my final tip and it's basically listen to your body okay and tune out all the noise listen to your body your body is going to tell you what's wrong if there's an issue your body is going to let you know that you're stressed that you need help like just listen to your body and tune out all the extra noise there are a lot of people that will kind of like discourage you from breastfeeding and things like that and so you have to tune out that noise you have to listen to your body you have to trust that your body is going to do what it's supposed to do of course there are instances where you're not producing milk or um, you know you may have issues maybe the baby has issues with latching or something like that that's a whole separate situation but you know if everything is going okay and you're just like a little tired or you're frustrated about something just listen to your body and trust that your body is going to do what it's supposed to do so if your baby is wetting diapers if your baby is having bowel movements your baby is fine like you're producing enough milk a lot of people think that they're not producing milk when their breasts don't feel full i know for me somewhere around three or four weeks my breast started to feel empty empty but they weren't empty like your breasts don't always have to be full and voluptuous for you to have milk in them um your your breasts always are producing milk so don't be discouraged listen to your body pay attention to yourself you have got this like at the end of the day you've got this and so breastfeeding it's challenging it's an investment of your time but it is worth that you can do it so those are my tips hope you enjoyed it feel free to subscribe and let me know below if you have any breastfeeding tips for first time moms talk to y'all soon